All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you like that car in the intro doing donuts. That is me. And today we are going to be drawing that S13 hatch that you see in the intro video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with drawing a basic outline of the entire shape of the car. Everything that we draw today is going to live within this shape. So let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. We're going to speed this up and just get a basic outline of what we're going to be working with today. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's make sure that we have everything on the correct layers. So we're going to take that path we drew, move it to a new layer, call the blue layer that we see here the background layer. That's the layer with the image. That's the only thing that's going to live on this layer. This layer is our main body shape. Now that we have those two sorted out, we can lock the background layer. See the shape we just drew? Awesome. Now we have something to reference. So what I like to do is go ahead and move on with a new layer, and we're going to call this the body lines. This is basically all of the like hood lines, headlights, anything on the bumper, just basic points of reference for when we're making our highlights and our shadows. I usually use a very bright color here just so that I know what I'm looking at and it's very easy to see as I zoom out. All right, that's looking good. So we just have a few more lines to draw since we uh, are just kind of looking at a simple front end shot. All right, slow this down to close this up. And then we'll zoom out and take a look at our work with the background layer off and I see something glaringly obvious. That shape, this one. I know the car is not symmetrical, but that just, it sticks out really bad. So let's get rid of that and we'll just make it kind of the same thing as the other side. Awesome. So the next thing I do is I draw some boxes off to the side and I use my eyedropper tool to just basically select a couple of rough colors to get a general idea of a beginning color palette for when I start filling in color on this car. So one thing I want to do is keep the lip separate, the lower lip down here on the front bumper. So I'm going to take this top path that I drew earlier on the body lines and make my own layer from it and we're going to call that the lip. So now we have this one line selected and I can continue on by using my pen tool and clicking on that last point and then continuing on drawing this line to create a shape. So now I have an outline of just the lip. So from here, I can build highlights and shadows on the lip only. So for now, let's turn the transparency down a bit so that we can see the general shape that we need to stay in, but this way we can draw on top of it and still see the highlights and the shadows so that we're not kind of drawing blind, if you will. So now I'm going to draw a few of these shadows in and start to create some depth on this lower lip uh, path that we're drawing. Even there, even just that one uh, secondary shape, you can already see it starting to take form. So now we can really start to draw a couple of the shadows that are cast on this front lip. And then we can draw a couple of the highlights as well. Since I was experimenting with gradients in the uh, last video on the exhaust tips of the uh, Mugen Civic, I decided I wanted to experiment a little bit more with gradients. So here you can see I've assigned radial gradient as the fill for this shape here. And I usually always go back in, make minor adjustments. And even though the gradient is very, very small, it is just enough to start to notice as you add more shapes. So now I've moved on to a little bit of a lighter tone and highlights. Again, drawing like, sh like colors, while you have that fill color selected 
is very beneficial. Now, even this is a even though this is a straight on front shot, it's kind of cheating if you only draw half of the car, in my opinion, and like reverse it. You know how you do that with your face and it always looks weird. It's kind of the same thing here. So by using the high by drawing different highlights and shadows, this is your opportunity to really showcase uh, that you're not just copying and pasting or copy pasta, if you will. Um, so not to overcomplicate that lower lip, we're going to just move on to the front bumper and I'm just going to draw this big white front bumper. We've added this to a new layer. Uh, I just haven't named it. So here we go. Double click on the layer and we are going to call this the front bumper. All right, so I'm just going to turn off that path that we just drew for the front bumper. And this way we can draw a few more paths on top to indicate the highlights and the shadows. White is one of the hardest colors to match. It's usually always a uh, it's usually always got some blue or some yellow in it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add another layer really quick called the shadow layer. We've talked about this in previous videos before, but this basically just gives us something to ground the illustration when we turn the background layer off. So now that we turn the background layer off, we can see that the shadow layer is kind of grounding the illustration, even though in this case, because we haven't drawn the tires, it's floating. I know. It's fine. It, it won't be moving forward. Okay. Moving on, we're going to turn on back back on the background layer and assign a fill color to the main body shape. Now we're going to go back through and change the body line color to black and now that's starting to look more like a real illustration. However, I've got this line going through the license plate area. So in order to fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer for the license plate. We're going to find it. It is on the lip layer. So it's this path here that's very bright. I'm going to take that and drag that up to the body lines. So instead of creating a new layer, it's just going to live there. Now we can get back to drawing a couple of the highlights on the front bumper. I think with this illustration, my goal was not to stress over too much detail and to showcase how much detail you really can get with fewer paths. Already it's starting to look like a car. Great. So now let's move on to these uh, front turn signal lights. This first path I'm drawing is kind of acting more as like that top shadow part and then this new path we're drawing is going to be the highlight that's casting down on this front bumper. Now we can move on to the actual light part itself. But see how those two shapes already just showcase that divot in the bumper for the light? Great. So now we're going to be drawing a few shapes that have light colors. And then instead of drawing each one of these as individual shapes, this is just using the line segment tool, going back and adjusting each line to fit within that shape that we drew. Going back and assigning colors and a few more pieces of shadow just to have these small pieces that add that tiny amount of detail. Okay, so now let's go back and we'll draw a few highlights on this turn signal housing. And that should take care of that. Now, one thing I've noticed this whole time I was drawing on the front bumper layer. So what we need to do is select all of these shapes that we drew, just drew on the front bumper layer, unless you don't care, but I am a stickler for keeping my layers clean. So here I'm turning on and off paths in the front bumper layer to determine where I started drawing the 
turn signal housing. So then I create a new layer, layer 8 that you see there, and then I'm going to select all of the paths that encompass the turn signal housing, double checking, and then I'm just going to drag those and drop those into layer 8. So now we will just rename layer 8 and we will call this turn signal driver. Okay, so now the, the turn signal housing is separate from the front bumper itself, just like it would be in real life. So now the neat thing we can do with that is just use our option key and click and drag to make a copy of it. And then we're just gonna do a flip horizontal on that. And now we have our passenger side turn signal housing. Except on this car, the uh, turn signal housing is orange or amber. So we're gonna go ahead and find that shape select it and just change its fill color to a kind of dirty, dingy amber color. All right, I think that's where we will end today's episode. Um, I'd like to thank you guys all for watching. Again, huge shout out to all the new subscribers. Thanks for sharing my stuff. Thanks for reaching out on Instagram. I do believe I'm going to try to make this illustration series uh, a little shorter. Uh, we're gonna be looking at like a two to three part um, series on this particular illustration before moving on because I certainly don't want to bore you guys and I really want to try to get back to illustrating myself so that I can get some more content pushed out. So as always, thanks for watching and hitting that like button. If you're interested in more Adobe Illustrator CC tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Also, be sure to check out my Instagram and Patreon pages, which are linked below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace!